Bibles and would like to turn with me today. I'm going to minister to you on riches. And I want to minister to you. This first scripture will be out of Philippians in the fourth chapter. If you want to start making your journey to there. I am very thankful for the things of God. I'm thankful that he is in my life. And I'm thankful for the riches that he has supplied me. Now, I'm not rich monetarily or rich with material things, but I'm rich in Jesus. Amen. Amen. I'm rich because of God's own son. Um, our world system is so upside down. We uh, gauge things. We gauge riches by our material wealth, yeah. by our valuable resources. And that has nothing to do with being rich. When we are rich in Jesus Christ and we're rich with family and friends and community, those are the things that matter. I was thinking and I read a little quote, I can't remember it to the word, but um, it talks about the best jewelry that you have around your neck is when your grandchildren are loving on you or you're holding your loved ones. That's the prettiest jewelry you can wear. We had that occasion. I'm doing my morning ramble. We had the occasion for Thanksgiving. Uh, we had all of our children and our grandchildren. We were missing a daughter-in-law. She worked Thanksgiving so that she can have Christmas Day off. But I felt wealthy yeah. in the things that matter. Just having the house was loud. It was noisy. The, boy, the boys play too rough. And I made him put the ball up. And one of my daughters kind of gave me the look like, why? And I was like, because I don't want to knock stuff off my walls. <laughs> But there was a loudness, there was a fullness in the house, and I'm wealthy in the things that matter. I'm wealthy in the things that matter. God is good. It's a season of thanksgiving, and I know that we look at things differently, but I want us to continue to be thankful every day for the rest of our lives. Amen. For the days that God gives us here, we need to be thankful. Do you believe that this morning? Because you'll get caught up in some other thinking if we don't maintain a heart of being thankful. And thankful is not just for November. That's We're right. going to continue to be thankful until the Lord returns for us. Amen? Amen. Amen? Father, I ask this morning that you anoint your word. I ask that you give us clarity, that you give us revelation in our hearts that will change us, that will move us into a position to be the men and women that you desire us to be, and that we will be effective for the kingdom of God. We give you all praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Philippians 4.19, this is Paul's writing, and uh, I'm just going to read this first verse to get us started. It said, but my God shall supply all your need according to his riches by Christ Jesus. Amen. And I was thinking of this, Paul, and throughout this particular chapter in the 14th chapter, Paul is expressing gratitude in this writing. As he's writing this chapter, there's an expression of gratitude. And there's things that Paul is seeing here for us today that's as important today as the day that Paul penned this, is that we are content when we see things God's way. When we are positioning ourselves and we are doing things in God's way, we, there is a contentment that you cannot purchase. There's a contentment that the world cannot offer. And Paul is expressing gratitude and that we need to be content seeing God's way. If you're still in that chapter, when we back up, it says, verse 11 through 13 says, Not that I speak in respect of want, for I've learned in whatsoever state I am in, therewith to be content. I know both how to be abased and I know how to abound. Everywhere and in all things I am instructed both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. Verse 13, I can do all things through Christ who strengtheneth me. Amen. Sometimes we don't feel like we can do all things, but I can tell you if you'll stand in Jesus Christ, you can do all things with Christ this morning. Amen. All things through Christ. In verse 19, Paul is expressing for us to trust God. To meet our needs. Amen. And you know, I'm not, a, I just say this a lot of stuff. Sometimes I should. But when God's meeting our needs, that doesn't mean that we lay around and do nothing. But we trust him. Amen. We don't lay around to do nothing, but we have to trust God to meet our needs. Amen. See, and the more we trust God, our thinking and our attitude begins to change. 
I know that as a fact for myself. The more I've learned to lean on God, the more I've learned to trust his goodness and his fullness, it's changed my attitude. It changes my way of thinking. And something good happens because of that this morning. See, when we begin to understand this on a deeper level, we begin to understand God's character. Amen? How many of us, we know the difference in wants and needs? Amen? Now, younger years, now my shoulder hurts too bad, but I used to say, my shoulder's better, but it gets tender when I, like yesterday, overdid it. I used to say, if I had a diamond ring so big that in the afternoon I had to put my arm in a sling because it was too heavy, I'd wear that baby. Okay? I'm not, I'm just saying, I'd wear it. I'd be like, yeah, how are you guys? That's why I probably don't have one. No, I love this one. But listen, that can be a want, right? Sometimes we get hung up in our wants and then we don't know how to trust God for our needs. Amen? Because we're so preoccupied with our wants. I haven't thought about that ring until we got ready to get in the car this morning. Mm -hmm. And I thought, you know, when your arm gets tired, you just rest it if you had to. I just lean on here and talk to you guys. And I try not to blind you with it. But listen, we've got, <laughs> I keep it turned. <laughs> Sometimes we'll allow our wants to rule us. When God says he will meet our needs, according to his riches. And I tell you what, our Father is rich. Our Heavenly Father is rich in everything that the soul of man has need of. Do you believe that this morning? And the deeper that we begin to understand that, we begin to understand God's character. And the more that we begin to understand God's character, the happier we'll be in our walk with the Lord this morning. See, God is all-knowing. Amen? And he's ever present. God knows everything we have need of, and he is present in every situation we walk through. And Lori, when Don was not well and we got the text that Don had been hospitalized, God was already there. When Dale was having some tests done and we're waiting for them to come back, they came back very good. God was already there. Whatever your circumstance is, he's all knowing about your circumstances. And he's already present to meet whatever your need is this morning. I want us to turn to Psalm 139 and read a couple of passages there. And I think the more that we acquaint, acquaint ourselves with the character of God, the more we will understand his plan for us, the more that we can trust him. How many of you know this? How many of you, this aside, this is free, totally just come to my mind. How many of you have ever been asked to give a letter of recommendation or a letter of reference for someone for a job? I hate doing that. I'm like, I don't know if they're going to show up and do the job. And I don't want my name attached to them. Because I, hey, come on. I don't know. Maybe they're a flake. Maybe they'll show up when they feel like it. Maybe they won't show up. Maybe they'll show up and not work. See, you don't want to attach your name to it, right? Because you don't know their character in the workplace. This is real. This is real. I can remember working um, somewhere, and my boss, my, the insurance agent in our office, received a phone call from a previous employee, and they asked some questions because they enlisted him as a reference, and he was very careful with his wording, and it was yeses and no, yes, no. There wasn't a lot of fluff because he didn't. He knew their character at work, and I'm going somewhere with this. The more we acquaint ourselves with God's character, we can trust him. We can trust him. We can tell our friend or our neighbor that God knows your need. I can tell my family that God knows your need and he's already there, amen? So we need to acquaint ourselves with the character of God. Psalm 139, Let's read verse 14 through 18 if you have your Bibles there. If not, follow along. Just It says, <clears throat> excuse me, this is a prayer of a believing heart, this particular psalm. And it says, if I should, excuse me, I started in the wrong place. I will praise thee for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works and that my soul knoweth right well. My substance was not hid from thee when I was made in secret and curiously wrought in the lowest parts of the earth. Thine eyes did see that my substance, yes, being unperfect, 
And in thy book all my members were written, which is con continuance were fashioned, when as yet there was none of them. How precious also are thy thoughts unto me, O God! How great is the sum of them! Verse 18. If I should count them, they are more in number than the sand. When I awake, I am still with thee. God's, God's character goes into every person that is created. God creates every person with his character. We have that choice whether to choose to walk with God's character or to walk away from that. But God puts his character into every creation. And I believe this with all of my heart. And as I was reading this, God thinks of you, verse 17 and 18, God thinks of you constantly. Does that make you feel good to know yes. that the Heavenly Father is constantly thinking of you? And I think when he looks at you, your, your picture would be on his refrigerator if he had one, okay? But I think when God looks at you, he sees you differently than you see yourself. Because sometimes we get blinded by circumstances and situations, and we begin to view ourselves how we see us. But look, God looks at you, and he's constantly looking in you. He's constantly concerned about you. He's interested in you. He wants a good outcome for you. That's how God sees us. I'm grateful for that this morning. I'm grateful that God doesn't see us how sometimes we see ourselves. I said to Dale this morning when I got out of bed, I had a hard time waking up, and I had spent a few hours wide awake, and when I did, I said, Dale, I'm not even going to get my hair wet. I think I'll just hairspray it like this. It was bad. But you know what? God looked at my messy hair this morning and loved me anyway. He knew my heart. And sometimes when things feel, I'm making reference to joke about my hair, but listen, sometimes when things look a little messy in your life, not, not something fun and playful, God sees you. He knows you. He knows your hurt. He knows your disappointment. He knows your triumphs. He knows your victories. He knows your pitfalls. He knows your downside. But God's character is what's important to us. It's important that we be knowing his character because I tell you what, we are rich in Jesus Christ. Our riches come from the Heavenly Father. I wrote down some ideas, some thoughts here about God's character. Now keep in mind, he's thinking of you constantly. The first thing that I wrote down, God is a creator. Amen. He created the heavens and the earth. God is good and he's generous. Do you believe that this morning? I've seen the goodness of God in my life and I've seen his generosity in my life. He's great. Amen. God is great. He's sovereign. I love this. God's holy. God is holy. I love that. He's loving. He's faithful. He's merciful. Forgiving. He's powerful. He's willing to give us revelation as we need revelation. I'm thankful for that. God reveals things to his children as we need them, and I'm thankful for that. And one of the last things that I've written down that, about his character and the things that I think God is rich in that affects us is he's righteous and just. Amen. Amen? Has anybody ever had something in your life that just was not fair? <sighs> That's hard, isn't it? It's hard when things aren't fair. And it's hard when you would like to have the last word so you could set the record straight. But we don't need to do that with Christ. Because he's righteous and he's just. And we stand in Jesus Christ. Amen. And his spirit dwells in us. And his characteristics begin to begin to be part of who we are. And our, his characteristics need to be seen in our daily living. Amen. Um, I have man hands, and I'm real conscious of this camera, so I'm going to do this. Yeah. Because when you, if you should look at my videos and I talk to you with my hands, all I see, I've looked at them, Morris, and all I see are hands about this big. <laughs> These are man hands. I have my dad's hands. When I met my brother for the first time, we grabbed him at the airport and we exchanged hugs on the curbside and then we went to the hotel and we had rooms side by side and I went back over to get a one last hug and I said, I couldn't sleep that night, I don't know why I even went to bed, I was a little wound up, but I remember saying to him, I want to see your hands. 
He has my father, our father. We share a biological father. He has my father's hands. He has my father's height. He has my father's appearance. But the hands, I needed to see his hands. Because those are a characteristic of our biological father. Does that make sense to you? What I want the world to see when they look at us, every one of us in this room, I want them to see our Father's characteristic in us. Because he's rich. They're not going to be looking for the big ring, but they're going to be looking, are you kind? Are you generous? Are you just? Are you fair? Are you loving? Are you caring? See. We want to embrace God's character. And the words I want you to remember today, I never plan to cry, because sometimes I snort when I cry. <laughs> what I want you to remember today, this short four words, and if we can get these four words right in our thinking, we'll be free in Jesus Christ. When you're embracing God's character, we've got to understand these four words. It's according to his riches. According to his riches. Not according to how I feel, not according to how things look, not according to how things appear. But when we live a life that we know that Christ meets our needs, whether it's a healing emotionally, a healing physically, whatever your needs may be, when you can reach the point that you say, my needs are going to be met according to his riches, not according to my thinking, not according to how I would like to see it done, but according to his riches, I will tell you, you'll be one of the richest people on your block. Amen? Amen. You'll step out your front door and there'll be a new breath of fresh air in you when you walk out into this world because there's something different. When you take on the characteristics of our Lord and Savior, things change in your day-to-day -day living. Amen? Do you believe that this morning? I want you all to be rich in the things that matter in this world. And I want us to embrace those characters that God has set before us. He's our Heavenly Father, and there's no reason why we can't embrace His characteristics. He's our DNA. He, his blood flows through our veins by Jesus Christ, amen, and the Holy Spirit that dwells in us. God bless you.